All right, it's time for some kitchen science. All right. <laughs> we are going to do what we do in kitchen science. Combine two of my favorite things, my kitchen and science. <laughs> and today is a very special edition of kitchen science because kitchen science and letting off steam are teaming up to make a super science special. <laughs> We are going to battle it out in a very messy way. Kit and I will be having a slime battle. So buckle up. We're going to teach you how to make some different kinds of slime. And then we're going to see which one is the best. <laughs> All right, for battle slime, we're going to start with one of my favorite kind of slimy things in the whole wide world. And for this slime, you only need two ingredients. You need cornstarch. And you need water. Yep, that easy. Now, if you want to get fancy, and I'm going to get fancy because, you know, it's fun to get fancy, you can add a little food coloring because it makes it pretty. Otherwise, it'll just be white. But what we're going to make with those two or three ingredients is oobleck. It's going to be very messy. It's going to be very slimy. And it's going to be very sciencey because I'm going to tell you what oobleck is. Oobleck is a non Newtonian fluid. What's that? Let's find out. It's time for some science. It's time for some science. It's time for some science today. <laughs> All right. What is a non Newtonian fluid? Okay, now, Newton was this guy, Sir Isaac Newton, super smart guy. And he came up with some properties for things, like uh, he had a lot to do with our theory of gravity and whatnot. And one thing that he proposed was that fluids react the same way when you apply pressure to them. Well, what scientists have later discovered is that there's a bunch of fluids that don't act that way, and we call them non-Newtonian fluids. And how those fluids act is that if you apply pressure to them, they change, they get solid, they change their state. They're no longer just a fluid. Like if you punch a glass of water, well, I shouldn't say a glass because you'll hit the glass. If you have a big bowl of water or a swimming pool and you punch it, what's going to happen? Nothing, right? Your, water's gonna, your hand is going to go right through that water, just as if it was water. But quicksand, ketchup, toothpaste, slime, silly putty, different situation. Those things can seem liquid, and then when you apply pressure to them, like a lot of force to them, they become solid. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, let's make some non-Newtonian fluids right now. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna take my trusty mixing bowl. I'm gonna take one cup of cornstarch. Dump it in my bowl right there. And then I'm gonna add about a half a cup of water to start with. And I'll tell you something about this. As I said earlier, it's not perfect. You know, like it just doesn't require like a, an exact measurement. You just kind of want to pour stuff in until you get the feel of it. But start with a half a cup of water and you're into your bowl. Just like that. And then you're gonna stir, and then you're gonna stir, and then you're gonna stir until you, what they call, incorporate all of the dry stuff. And you'll see as you're stirring, it's pretty fun because it provides resistance even as you're stirring it. You can kind of, I highly recommend thinking about this as you're stirring it together because while you're stirring it, you can kind of start to understand how this is different than just a regular liquid. It's not like orange juice. It's not like milk. It's providing some resistance, but you do have to stir and stir and stir. And in that stirring phase, if you do want to add some fancification, I love me some fancification as long as I don't get it all over my kitchen. So we're going to add some blue food coloring. Okay, I'm almost at the end of this one, so it's been tricky to add, but we'll get, ooh, look at that. I don't know if you can see, but it's getting awfully pretty, and boy, I almost just spilled a bunch of oobleck on my computer. That would have been a bummer. <laughs> okay, so be careful with your oobleck. It can be quite messy. And I'll also say, when we get to the part where we're playing with it, be very careful with it, because it can be quite messy. 
Okay, so here we go. I've stirred together my oobleck, and now it's time to plug. And you'll see, it looks, let's see if we can get this going on. It looks extremely liquid, right? It definitely looks like a liquid. But if you grab it, and you try to hold it, you'll see, it feels like it's got a solid in there. It feels not like a liquid. You can squish it, you can play with it, you can try and put it into like say a baggie and then squish it around. You can try punching it if you really dig this. Oh, this takes a lot, but it's super fun. If you wanna take a couple of pounds of cornstarch and put it into a big tub and then mix it with water and step on it. Oh my goodness, that's super gross, but super fun. <laughs> All right, so that's Oobleck. Let's see what Kit has going on. Okay, by now we've probably all made slime before, so we know that we need a lot of glue as our base. And then we're going to need some contact solution. This works because it has borax in it, and I'll give you the science explanation for that later. And then we have baking soda. I happen to have a huge box, you don't need that much. And then some food coloring. I use the gel color because I like its brighter colors. Some measuring spoons and a measuring cup. And of course, a bowl to mix it in and a spoon. All right, so here we are. I have a cup of white glue. I have a tablespoon of baking soda. We'll be using about a tablespoon and a half of the contact solution. And then of course, our food coloring. So we're going to start with mixing our glue and our food coloring and our baking soda. Uh, we want to make this sure this is thoroughly combined just so that the color will be even later when you mix it together because um, the reaction will come almost immediately after you put in the contact solution. Um, as you can see, I didn't really like the color in mine, so I added a little bit of more coloring just to make sure it was darker. And it turned out a little brighter too. That was nice. Um, and then we put in the contact solution. Now, the less you put in, the thinner it'll be. The more you put in, the thicker it'll be. And as you see, storing immediately, you start seeing it form up into some slime. Um, and the reason why this works, interestingly enough, the, according to the American Chemical Society, borax in water forms an ion called a borate ion. When the borax solution is added to the glue solution, the borate ions help link the long polymer molecules to each other so they cannot move and flow as easily. And so it is a Newtonian fluid. As you can see, it squishes, but if you stretch it, it acts more like a solid. All right, we've made our new black. Mm -hmm. We've made some slime. We've made some slime. And now we get to play. Woohoo! We're back in my realm now. We're going to be making some art. But we also have to make a hypothesis yes. on how this is going to happen. Now, the kind of art we're doing is called splatter art. Oh, that sounds <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so it's going to be a little bit of a battle. <laughs> but we kind of want to know what will happen after these dry. Yeah. What do you think? Well, that's a good question. You know, like the oobleck has two ingredients. It's got cornstarch and water. So, but the water will dry and the cornstarch will be left and we'll have this giant dusty mess. That's my hypothesis for the oobleck. All right, mine for the slime is that the dye is really, really, because of the chemical structure that forms, really impregnated into the object, and I don't know that it will come out. Huh. So I don't think it will dye the paper in any way, but I think it might have almost a vinyl quality. Oh, oh, right. cool, yeah. So, so let's go to the fun part. Okay. You ready? Yeah, go get some slime. <laughs> All right, we're going to start with the color I made on camera, though I didn't make four. I have a feeling mine's not going to splat as well as as well as hers is. We're going to have to kind of break it up. <laughs> well, that's satisfying, though. <laughs> I wonder if this will even stick. <laughs> blah. Blah. All right. Let's go with some <laughs> yellow. I feel like we should make oh. a sculpture. Look at this. I fell on, I fell on the floor. <laughs> The nice thing about slime is you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh, this is so much fun. <laughs> I feel like with that we should make a target and have like a carnival type game. Right. You know, like... <laughs> Alright, let's 
Oh, you know what we did with the green? We should make a giant nose, and the target would be to throw the, the booger at the nose. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that would be a super popular carnival game. Now I want to play Put the Booger in the Nose. <laughs> All right, and now our final color, we got some red. That is a bright red. Yeah, I use gel colors in mine. Oh, I think that makes a big difference, doesn't it? Yeah. Whoa, look at that. It's a little more expensive, but they seem to come out much brighter. Oh, we could make a crime scene with that stuff. <laughs> ah, it's stuck to my fingers. <laughs> All right, I think. I'm getting a spot there. Oh, oh what? what? <laughs> and there we go. And I think you'll be taking some home with you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's time to start splattering. Okay. Oh no! Yeah, so grody. Oh, look at that! Doesn't that look cool? Now, if you don't know anything about Jackson Pollock, you may want to take a peek at that um, that dude's biography because, and that dude's art for sure because it's fascinating. They called him Action Action Jackson because he was so active with throwing the paint and walking all around and using his whole body to paint. He was a really, he was a, an artist, a troubled dude, but a really interesting painter. Okay, I think this is going to be my last bit. We'll see what happens. This is going on much more liquid than I think. Okay. Is this enough? I think so. I think so, too. I think that's beautiful. My ode to Jackson Pollock. <laughs> All right, it's time for splatter battle. Are you ready? Oh, oh my goodness! All right, here we go. Okay. <laughs> I didn't get mine over there. I can't either, man. I think I'm gonna put my mask on. Oh, I think we're gonna have to mask up and go <laughs> next to each other. Right? Yeah. Okay. All right, put the mask on. Try not to get slime on it. I was gonna say, like, <laughs> an ooblecky mask is no friend to anybody. <laughs> right. Yeah. Let's get some blue. Oh, it actually is sticking. I tried to keep it up in the cardboard and it was like. Okay, that combination is amazing. <laughs> that red is fantastic. I just love the, the liquid next to the more plasticky of the slime. It's interesting that these are both Newtonian fluids because they, they're so different, yeah. right? The way that they interact with their hand. I mean, this stuff is like water and then solid when you squeeze it. And oh, slime's only yeah. really kind of solid when you're pulling it. It's kind of interesting. Ooh, that one, I wonder what that one's going to turn out like. Just poured a little on top of some of it. Oh, yeah. The blue, I had a tendency to be, you used a little more. Um, contact solution and because of that it became a lot more solid than some of the so other much fun all right do one last color and then we will wait a whole week yeah and see how this comes out nice all right our works of art have had a chance to dry and this is what they look like this is jackson pollock inspired art with ublek this is Jackson Pollock inspired art with slime. And this is Jackson Pollock inspired art with oobleck and slime. Probably my favorite. Go make art. Go do science. <laughs>